Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be cooking Bingy with Babish's Gnocchi and Pesto. This is a two part video so once you finish watching me make gnocchi go watch me make some pesto or else. Right so first what you're going to want to do is if like me using month old potatoes just cut off all the weird sprouty bits because I'd, I'd, they might be poisonous, I'm not sure. You might see me checking over to the camera a bit more this video as I've managed to recruit myself a cameraman. So all you viewers at home will be treated to more award-winning shots such as this one. Look, just look at that camera work, it's absolutely outstanding. Oh, obviously doesn't like that very much. Oh, and he's picking my nose. Okay, maybe not award-winning. Once those potatoes have been... Right, okay. So once all the poisonous knobbly bits have been chopped off, get your oven turned on, put all your potatoes on a baking tray and get them shoved in the oven. Oh, actually first as he's just remembers you need to get yourself a fork, there you go, and jab a load of holes in them or they might explode in the oven or something. While it's not essential to recreate a Monty Python scene while doing this, it does help with the softness and fluffiness of the potatoes. You can also turn your kitchen into your favourite dance hall to help with this, as so. Again, doing this helps to achieve a fluffier, lighter gnocchi. Once that's all done, just stick them in the oven for an hour with a little boom. Give a to the camera and practice your most intimidating face. Oh, scared him. There you go. Doesn't like that. Now, if like me, you're cooking for your flatmates and you didn't tell them that it would take an hour just to cook the potatoes, it's probably quite important to cook up some garlic bread for them to eat so when it gets to half past eight and they still haven't eaten, they don't club you to death with them. Once your potatoes are done, just grab them out of the oven and... Hang on, what's all this? Get them out of the way. Thank you. Check to see if they're done by tapping each of them once and then just have a good long stare at them. Oh, and he's back, there you go. So get yourself a tea towel, give it a sniff and start peeling your potatoes. Now, if like me, you might be lucky enough to have Greg Wallace potatoes. Oh, there you go, there he is. Oh, he doesn't like the look of that, obviously not a very big fan. I should probably say that you're supposed to let these cool for a bit before doing this because they can get quite hot. As you can see. Now, peeling them can take quite a while so your cameraman may get a bit bored, as you can see. So to stop this, you can just give him a machine that goes beep or something like that. Once you've got that first one peeled, just plonk it on the baking tray. Get out the way of the avalanche and prepare for some daft questions. Are they supposed to come, though? Um, I don't think so. But why do you need a potato? That's how you make gnocchi. After you give some great answers and he just disrespects you like that, you're going to want to continue peeling your potatoes. To make the potatoes as fluffy as possible, give a cheeky little smile when you peel them. Very nice. Now here's a reminder of how hot the potatoes can actually get. If you don't let them cool enough, you will turn into Jeremy Clarkson. Again, please be careful as these can become very slippery, almost as if it's a... Hot potato. Oof. Um, yeah, that's not gone burned down very well, has it, Peter? Pellet next time. Once they've all been peeled and you've got all your rubbish jokes out of the way, stick them back on the baking tray, give your tea towel a shake and let them cool down for a bit. Once they've cooled down enough so you don't burn your hand off, get them all grated on the fine side of a grater. <laughs> Bloody hell. Right, on the fine side of a grater and get all the rubbish chucked in the bin. After that's all done, give yourself a refresh of the recipe. To do this efficiently, you need to make sure your back's straight enough for David Wheater to prove he's the greatest footballer of all time. <clears throat> there we go. Go on, David's son. After you've taken in that excellent piece of common tree, spread out the potato on a baking tray and separate an egg to mix into it. 
Now, I know there's probably less rank ways to do this, but I wasn't thinking straight, okay. Obviously, he doesn't like it very much. And I, do you know what, I totally agree with him. It was a mistake. I was going through a tough time. And I can only apologise for what you're witnessing here. Once that's done, you're just going to want to whisk that up until it's all whisked. I don't know. Once you've done that, just pour it over your potatoes. You can add a little bit of Snoop Dogg like I've done. That just gives it a little extra bite. Of course this is optional, but it really does lift the dish. It is also worth saying that other West Coast wrappers will do a similar thing to the dish. Once that's all been added, you need to add your flour. The geezer says add about 100 grams of flour per 500 grams of potatoes. So just work that out through maths and stuff. It's also worth mentioning at this point that your cameraman will reach peak boredom, so just give him a gentle reminder of why he's actually here. Come on, I'm the star, hey? Eh? Much better. Now you have to start mixing in the flour and the potato, start off using a knife or something to do this. Basically do this until it starts looking all crumbly, and can be described as one of the following. Looks like sand. That's sick. Please vote in the poll above as to what you think it looks like the most and comment below if you've got any other ideas. Knead the sick like dough for about 90 seconds and you'll get a nice ball of dough like this. Boom! Boom indeed. Hang on, what's going on here? Um right, okay. Um anyway. Lost track of it here. Let your cameraman poke your dough for a bit. And then get some flour and flour your surface. When you are flouring your surface, please make sure to remove any Jason Manford press shots as you can. There one goes. See you later, Jason. And then just start rolling out your dough into little sausages and then into big, long, wiggly lines. Once you've got to this point, they should look either like A... Oh, or B. Look at that big wobbly wiggle. Again, please vote in the poll above as to which you think it looks like and comment below if you've got any other extra ideas. The winner of the best comment will receive a six month supply of birthday cards. Once that's all rolled out, you're going to want to chop it up into knocky sized pieces. I don't know, just give it a quick chop through as so. And Oh, I don't know what's going on here. That's better. Right, keep chopping. Right, what is good? Why? Right, come on, keep chopping. Yeah, right, what is going on here? Please stop, stop this, stop. Thank you. you finished? Oh god, Jesus, what is that? Sorry, you had to see that, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, uh, back to the gnocchi. Just finish them off by poking a little hole in them. You can do it as fast as me if you like, or if you want to be a bit like the cameraman, just get your finger in one for about 10 minutes. If you catch a cameraman messing around in the flower, like he is now, it's um, good to remind him that this is a work zone and not a play zone, as so. Do the same with the rest of your gnocchi, apparently this time a lot faster and with a lot less dancing. Jab a load more holes in them and then just stick them all in a baking tray. Bosh! Bosh indeed. Thank you for watching. Part 2 of this video will be uploaded once we reach a million likes, so please remember to like the video, comment, subscribe to me, goodbye. Hang on, what's going on here? Oh, not you as well, Bruce.